The 2021 MLB season's coming to an end, and you know on this channel we love to do predictions, so we're not gonna necessarily predict the playoffs just yet. That's gonna come when the teams are officially in the playoffs, like all of them, because there's still some close races here. But instead today, I'm gonna predict all the major MLB awards. So we're talking about the MVP, the Cy Young, Comeback Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and Manager of the Year, along with Reliever of the Year. We're doing them all. I don't think I forgot a single one. And again, these are my predictions as to who I think is going to win, not necessarily who would be my pick. So keep that in mind. My picks might be different than who I think is going to win. So don't get mad at me if I didn't pick your favorite player. Because again, these aren't my picks. These are my predictions. So as always, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a like on it. It really does help support my channel. As well as subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. Click that sub button, join the team. Get in the comment section down below. Let me know who you think deserves to win these awards. And make sure you follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Link is in the description. So let's get it started off with the managers of the year. And for the American League, I think there's one obvious choice. And it's going to be Scott Service of the Seattle Mariners. Scott Service has done a really underrated job in Seattle. First off, 85 and 70 record. Who saw that coming? Nobody. Not with that roster, not with that team. He's handled it beautifully. While they have had issues scoring runs, they've been able to still win 85 games with a negative 65 run differential. I truly think Scott Service has something to do with that. The Mariners are currently second in the AL West, and they're three games out of the wild card, ahead of teams like the A's, the Indians, only one game behind the Blue Jays. Nobody saw the Seattle Mariners team being as good as they are this year, and Scott Service is a big reason why. He's been fantastic at the helm in Seattle. Seattle. Definitely deserves to be the manager of the year in my eyes. And then moving on to the National League, I mean, this guy should win manager of the year for the entire Major League Baseball season. It's Gabe Kapler. I can't believe I'm saying it, but Gabe Kapler of the San Francisco Giants, I mean, if you pick anybody else, you are simply wrong. Gabe Kapler, I mean, this guy went from being an awful manager in Philly to being one of the best in baseball. He's killing it in San Francisco. The best manager in baseball right now, I think you probably have to say that. While I don't think he's actually doing as much as it appears, I think he has a really great formula. He's following it to a T, so much much so that the Giants have 101 wins right now, the best record, the best team in baseball, and they are rolling into the playoffs. I mean, the Giants are playing so well. He's making all the right moves, all the right decisions. He is the right guy to lead this team, and you're talking to someone who thought Gabe Kapler was one of the worst managers in baseball when he was in Philly, and he's completely turned it around. Fantastic job in San Francisco. One of the best jobs, honestly, we've ever seen a manager do. I stand by that. Now, moving on to the relievers. We got some nice throwers here, and it's kind of a little obvious here. For the American League, while there have been some great guys going under the radar, Liam Hendricks is still the best reliever in that league, and he deserves to win the AL Reliever of the Year. Liam Hendricks, I feel like, is quietly just being one of the best relievers in baseball again. Like, he's got to be number two right behind Josh Hader. 41.5% carry rate this year, walking less than 3% of the batters he faces. He's given up more home runs than walks this year. That's, like, actually ridiculous. A 2.69 ERA, a FIP at 2.52, XFIP at 2.29, and a Sierra at 1.66. All these numbers across the board, like the best in the American League in almost every single category. 14K per nine less than a walk per nine. Opponents are only hitting 176 against him and he has a whip at 0.75. Yeah, Liam Hendricks, best reliever in the American League again. And for my National League reliever of the year pick, I mean, it's the best reliever in baseball again. As much as I want my boy Aaron Loop, it's not him, it's the other left-handed reliever in the National League, Josh Hader. Oh, he's unbelievable. Listen to these numbers. Now for Josh Hader, remember those crazy numbers you heard for Liam Hendricks? Yeah, they're better for Josh Hader. He may still walk a few more guys, but he doesn't give up any home runs. He almost has a 45% K rate at 43.9% and ER Array at 1.29, a FIP at 1.89, an XFIP at 2.59, a Sierra at 2.28. Opponents are only hitting 128 against him this year. Yes, 128, and he has a whip at 0.86. He's left on base 91.7% of the runners. He is just doing things we haven't seen before. Josh Hader continues to be the best reliever in baseball. It's honestly not fair. I don't know how people hit him. It just doesn't make sense. He's disgusting. Now, for the comeback players of the year, of course, starting off in the American League, and we have to give it to Trey Mancini. This guy beat cancer. Came back this year and had a really, really strong year with the Baltimore Orioles. One of the best stories of the baseball season. Trey Mancini deserves it 100%. It's truly incredible what Trey Mancini has been able to do this year, especially coming back from cancer. That alone, comeback player of the year, but he's also had a really strong season. 21 homers, 32 doubles and a triple with 70 RBIs in 140 games. He's going to finish the year with 600 plate appearances. That's an incredible feat in of itself. 253 average, 327 on base, 437 slugging, 763 OPS, OPS plus at 105. That's good for a WRC plus of 105. An F war of 0.7, B war of 0.6. Yes, it's not the greatest season in all of baseball history, but coming back from cancer, the story of Trey Mancini, he has to be your pick for comeback player of the year in the American League. Now, to figure out the National League comeback player of the year, it was a little more difficult because there weren't as many obvious choices here, but I think I'm going to go with Buster Posey of the San Francisco Giants. Took off 2020 because of COVID and didn't have a great 2019. And this year in 2021, oh, Buster Posey's one of the best catchers in baseball. Posey felt like he was kind of dead in the water. Bad 2019 season coming off of a week 18 and in 
entire 2020 off, you didn't know what you would get from him, but he's putting together a really, really good year. One of the best years a catcher's having in Major League Baseball. Defensively, he's still great. He's sharp as a knife. And offensively, that's really where it surprises everyone. The power, the offense, the average, it's all starting to come back. This year in 106 games, Buster Posey has 18 homers, 21 doubles, 50 RBIs, hitting 301 with a 386 on base, 500 slugging, 886 OPS, good for an OPS plus at 138, a WRC plus at 140, Woba at 378, a 4.4 F4, 3.2 B-War, ISO right around 200. He's walking at the highest clip of his career. And Gay is playing that stellar defense. We all thought Buster Posey was kind of dead in the water, but he has surprised everybody a little renaissance to his career here. The rookie of the year race is so tough. In the American League, there's not really like an obvious choice. I could go with Randy. We do love some MF named Randy, but I'm actually going to go with the pitcher. And I'm going to go with Luis Garcia of the Houston Astros, who's under the radar had a fantastic season. Luis Garcia has been a under the radar ace for the Astros this year. He's made 29 appearances, 27 starts to an 11 and 7 record in 150 and a third innings pitch thus far. Probably finished with close to 160, 165 for the year. An ERA at 3.23, FIP at 3.51, XFIP 3.93. Yes, a little bit high because he just doesn't really give up that many home runs. Only one home run per nine innings, striking out over nine and a half batters per nine, 2.8 walks, a K rate of 26.4%, walk rate of 7.9, a whip at 1.15. And while his first half was a little bit stronger than his second, I still think he's performed well enough on this Houston Astros team to win the Rookie of the Year in the American League. He's really picked up a lot of the help that they needed on that rotation. Similarly, in the National League, I think it's a two-horse race here, and that's between Trevor Rogers and Jonathan India. And I still really don't know who I'm going to go with. This is so tough, because they both very much deserve it. I want to say Jonathan India, but I think missing on the playoffs is going to hurt him a little bit. Like, Trevor Rogers has been so good. The dude is an ace in the making. I mean, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jacob deGrom and beat him at one point this year. He's really good, but Jonathan India had a strong second half, a really great second half, along with some other great months at the start of the year. After what was a slow start, I'm going with Jonathan India. Jonathan India, man, what a year he's had. Slow start to the year. Didn't have a great first couple months, but he really turned it on as the summer started to come around, and his numbers for the year have been great. 144 games, he's got 600 plate appearances. That's a legit season. 20 home runs, 31 doubles, 2 triples, 67 RBI, stealing 11 bases, 136 hits on the season with 91 runs, hitting 268 with a 375 on base, 455 slugging, and an 830 OPS. He's been hit by a pitch 22 times as well, along with walking 68. That's pretty insane. What is that? 90 walks basically on the season. His WRC plus on the year is 121, an F4 of 3.7, B war of 3.5. Plays a very nice second base, all around good player. When you have a walk rate over 10% and you're hitting for the power and average that Jonathan India has, you're going to be a really good ball player and he's turned into one. Huge piece for the Reds. Going to be a part of that future. The top pick finally showed that promise we all expected. Now here we go to the big boys. Let's go with the Cy Young pick here. And this one in the American League was tough. Again, it's a two horse race in my eyes. Garrett Cole or Robbie Ray? And as we've gotten down the stretch here a little bit, I think it's going to be Garrett Cole of the Yankees. The numbers, honestly, he's just better, which stinks because I want Robbie Ray to win it, but I really do think it's going to be Garrett Cole. And here's why. Yeah, Robbie Ray had a great season, but Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, I think is just better. While Garrett Cole does have a slightly higher ERA than Robbie Ray at 3.08 compared to 2.68, all the other numbers kind of lead towards Garrett Cole's favor. 3.08 ERA on the season, 2.83 FIP, XFIP of 2.90, Sierra of 2.91. All those numbers are better than Robbie Ray. The whip is 1.04, which is the same as Robbie Ray. He's striking out more batters, 33.9%, walking less at 5.9%, better K per nine, better walk per nine, better home runs per nine. I truly believe Garrett Cole's just had a better season. It's so close. It really is. But besides the innings pitched and the lower ERA, I just, I can't really give it to Robbie Ray. Garrett Cole has just been better. And it pains me to say it. I want to pick Robbie Ray, but Garrett Cole, 16-8 record, 3.08 ERA, a whip at 1.04 and 175 innings pitched, along with leading his team to the playoffs. I think he gets the nod at Cy Young. And then the National League, there's a lot more heads that are involved in this. You got Walker Bueller, Max Scherzer, Corbin Burns. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but we got to go with Corbin Burns, who's arguably having one of the best pitching seasons of all time. Corbin Burns is nasty. Nasty. Corbin Burns. Oh my God. What a season. We knew he was good. We knew he had a great hot start, but we didn't think he was going to be this good. I don't think 27 appearances, 27 starts, 165 innings pitched 11 and four record with a 2.29 ERA, a FIP at 1.56, an XFIP at 2.30, F4 of 7.6. I mean, he's just been the best pitcher in baseball this year. 12.55 K per nine, 1.8 walks per nine, 0.3 home runs per nine. It's unbelievable how well he can limit the home run. Like he just doesn't give up any. His home run to fly ball ratio is 5.3. That's insanely low. Then you look at his K rate, 35.5% K rate, 5.1% walk rate, K to walk rate of 30.4. A whip under one at 0.93 is disgusting. I just don't know how you pick anybody but Corbin Burns. Max Scherzer's just having a great year and I bet you he gets a bunch of votes, but Corbin Burns is the right pick. And I think that's who the writers are going to end up choosing. And then it leads us now to the MVP race. And the MVP race 
in both leagues is incredibly close. So much so that I almost debated doing two co-MVPs. But we're not. We're going to pick one. We're not going to be pandering here. We're going to have to pick one from each. And in the American League, while I think Vlad Jr. deserves to win an MVP award, he unfortunately is going up against Shohei Otani, who is possibly one of the best players this world's ever seen and doing something that we really have never seen before in Major League Baseball in a single season. So yes, as much as I want Vlad Jr. and I think he deserves it, my AL MVP pick is going to be Shohei Otani. He's unreal. Yes, I picked Otani. I wanted to pick Vlad, but I picked Shohei and here's why. Shohei has the combination of hitting and pitching. Offensively, Vlad is having a better year, without a doubt. More home runs, more RBIs, better average on base slugging, better OPS. He is definitely the better offensive player. And if this was only an offensive award, I think he gets it. But when you're talking about the most value, the fact that Shohei puts up these numbers plus the pitching is unbelievable. Offensively on the year, 151 games, 45 homers, 98 RBIs, 24 stolen bases as well, a almost 15% walk rate, 257 average, 371 on base, 596 slugging, gives him an OPS at 968, which is just, again, disgusting to say. Oh yeah, by the way, 25 doubles and seven triples as well. He's also been intentionally walked 17 times, OPS plus at 159, WRC plus at 153, and then you've got the pitching side. This is where it gets crazy. He pitched, and he pitched really well. Otani on the year, pitching, 22 starts, nine and two record, 123 and a third innings pitched, 3.28 ERA, a FIP at 3.56, C, X FIP at 3.61, over 10 K per nine, 3.2 walk per nine, one home run per nine, a K rate at almost 30%, a walk rate under 10, a whip at 1.11, and opponents were in 205 against him. If he wasn't pitching, Vlad's the winner here, but because he also has this sick pitching year behind him, I think Shohei Otani is a clear and obvious choice. And then the National League, this one's this one's crazy. Bryce Harper or Juan Soto, that's who it's down to. Juan Soto on a losing team, last place team in the division, but his numbers are unreal. And Bryce Harper's leading his team to the playoffs, possibly maybe a National League East crown, and he's having an MVP season. Who do I pick here? I want to say Soto, but I do think that it's going to end up being Bryce Harper. And here's why. The battle between Soto and Harper is so insanely close. But again, because it's my prediction, I'm going with who I think is going to win. While Juan Soto definitely deserves, I think, to win the MVP, so does Bryce Harper. And I think the writers will pick Bryce. Harper has more home runs than Soto, a better OPS, and they have the same F4. Now, Soto leads in B-War. He has a better average, better on base percentage, and more RBIs. But the fact that he's playing on a losing team, I think, is going to hurt him a little bit. And Harper really is carrying his team into the playoffs. They're both having sick years. But yeah, Harper, here we go. 34 homers, 40 doubles, a triple, 82 RBIs with 13 stolen bases on the season, 313 average, 433 on base, 623 slugging, 1056 OPS. Those last two numbers, best in Major League Baseball. He's walked 97 times, striking out 122. I know that's not as good as Soto, but here's what it comes down to. Harper is having an MVP season. The Phillies are close to being a playoff team, might win the National League East. If they do win it, Harper's 100% winning the MVP. I think there's just no doubt. If they don't, Soto can definitely sneak in, maybe steal some votes. But unfortunately in baseball, writers do take tend to value being on a winning team more than having a better season. And it's not like Harper's having a bad year. He's also having one of the best years in Major League Baseball. So there's really no wrong choice here, but I do think that Bryce Harper's going to end up winning it. So those are my award predictions. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Who do you agree with? Who do you disagree with? Let me know what you're thinking. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Drop me a follow on all my social media, Giraffe Neck Mark, links in the description. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent and upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye!